Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for my rational perspective on England 4, Ukraine 0, England dominating this game, getting through to the semi-finals of the Euros at Wembley against Denmark on Wednesday. Is it coming home? I mean, I think that it's hard not to be so excited with this team and have so much belief in them. What is going on currently? Just trying to savour it all because I think if you would have told me after Euro 2016 that England would get in the next two tournaments would get to both semi-finals under Gareth Southgate I probably wouldn't have believed you um, but it's just a testament to the work Southgate has done and the way he shaped and molded this team and they seem to be growing in confidence players like Harry Kane are starting to find form at the exact right moment for England after a slow start and uh, England have an amazing opportunity to right the wrongs of World Cup 2018, go a step further and make it to the final against Denmark on Wednesday. Um, but getting into this game, I'm so excited too, because I think there were so many good performances just overall. It was a joy to watch and I'm sure it'll be a joy to rewatch because um, it was such a good performance. Before we get into tonight's review, I want to ask you guys, please hit that like button because it helps new people find the channel. Hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads on the channel. Also want to say a massive thank you to fans Fanslide, the world's first live in-play fantasy football game. They're partnering with me on all of my England content. It's continuing at Euro 2020. Really fun to play. And so much thanks to Fanslide this summer for their support on the channel. It's live, it's free to play, and you know it's live because they use Opta stats. So download for free, get your mates involved. Um, and as well, not only is it free to play, it's fun to play, but there's prize money on every single game at Euro 2020, up to £10,000 in prize money the way you use the game sliding players in and out using multiples it's really fun to use throughout the entire tournament and as i say download it use my link in the description box below and when you're on the app please add me as well i'm on there at son of chelsea and if you go to my twitter at son of chelsea right now until tuesday there's a mason mount shirt giveaway this show of mason mount's name on the back you can get one for yourself on my twitter page so get involved in that as well at son of chelsea but thank you fan slide for supporting my content this summer but the big thing going into this game, team selection-wise, was Southgate varying it up, going to a back four, the 4 3 one of course, moving away from that against Germany. I think we kind of expected that because you you felt like England were going to uh, go on the front foot in this game, probably going to have a majority of the ball had to go at, at Ukraine. You know, there was a sense against Germany being a little bit more cautious, absolutely understandable, and trying to nullify their threats. Uh, but both Jaden Sancho and Mason Mount returning to the team. Mount, um, not that much of a surprise. He's been an essential player for Gareth Southgate through qualifying for months, uh, played the opening two games of this tournament and of course missed the previous two um completely missed the Czech Republic game but of course was on the bench for the Germany game of course because having to go into isolation with Ben Chua um and you know not surprising that he was back and you know Mason was back to his brilliant levels tonight just doing in in some ways subtle things defensive things too that just summarize how good of a midfielder he is but Jadon Sancho after his big move to Man United getting a start there was so much um noise around Sancho in the early rounds of this tournament um about him not getting on the pitch when England looked a little bit dull up front. But um, tonight he was there and, and he had some brilliant moments too. Um, I think that in terms of you could see the flair, you could see the the confidence growing, growing into Sancho's game. He didn't, I think, massively affect the game in terms of the goals, but I think there were some moments there that definitely give you excitement. And just once again demonstrates how strong this England side are, the options that Gareth Southgate has. I mean, Jack Grealish, who was a big part of our win against Germany, didn't come off the bench tonight. You know, he wasn't involved at all um, and that can be seen as a negative like too many talents but I think the way Southgate is rotating these players in and out I think is brilliant and, and he's kind of looking at each game seeing what he needs for each game like felt that tonight he needed a good one-on-one -on -one player like Jaden Sancho he needed the pace and energy of a Mason Mount in midfield and, and you know it worked once again the start is absolutely perfect and you know both of England starts to to the two halves were absolute like dreamland for England you know the first few minutes we came out of intensity the nice rotations and, and the slick passing tonight at, at moments from England was absolutely brilliant when they got into the final third the likes of Sterling Sancho and Mount behind uh, Harry Kane really working well but once again Raheem Sterling just causing trouble you know getting the ball directly running through it, it kind of was a little bit similar to the run he made against Germany before that eventual uh, winner that he put in um, but I think that once again the ball through to Harry Kane and Harry Kane finding form now you know he's very much awake at this tournament perfect run and a brilliant finish and it just settled I think the nerves of England um, the rest of the half you know England could have scored a second you know Declan Rice had a thunderbolt shot uh, Jaden Sancho had a shot which I think he could have done better with after some good play I think it was from Luke Shaw um, 
I mean, it was called offside, but I think if Sancho would have put that ball in, I think it may have been given actually. Um, and yeah, once again, nice slick one twos. There were moments where we were getting into some really interesting space. Um, I think injuries forced Ukraine to, of course, change their formation from a three back to a four back, which at the end of the first half allowed them to press further players up the pitch. Um, but I felt that the likes of Mason Mount and Declan Rice really helped shut down any major trouble for England in defence. Our defensive unit has been so solid the way we're able to allow the attacking players to get up the pitch and cause havoc, but still have sort of the balance to not be exposed on transition. And that really, once again, you saw that tonight, you know, the likes of Yarmolenko, who we know from the Premier League can be quite devastating on the counter-attack and he never really got sufficiently into the game. And I think that was down once again to England's pressure, being able to really control the game, control threat, spot danger, which the likes of Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips do so well. But even Mason Mount, there was one moment in the first half where Mason ran all the way back to cut out a ball from Yarmolenko, win it back. It was just absolutely brilliant. So I think Mason deserves credit tonight. Of course, I'm going to say that as a Chelsea fan. But the second half started perfectly. And Luke Shaw had, you know, we've seen Luke Shaw's growing confidence in this tournament. And he set up the first goal for Raheem Sterling um, on Tuesday. Um, and a brilliant ball in uh, for Harry Maguire. The two Man United players linking up. But we know the threat of Maguire from set pieces way back at World Cup 2018. And uh, you saw it once again tonight. Um, just an absolutely exceptional header. And it's once again a killer blow to Ukraine. Because I'm sure at half time they would have been thinking after a little bit of confidence at the back end of the first half. Maybe... England being a little bit complacent due to their dominance in possession, they could get something from this game. It absolutely um, gave uh, control to England. It, I think it forced Ukraine to maybe commit more men than they actually wanted to at that period of the game. And then the third goal didn't come long after. Once again, Luke Shaw with a perfect ball into Harry Kane to head the ball down 3-0. Dreamland, lovely stuff, fluid movement, the sort of movement I think we wanted to see from England a lot more, getting more players involved and, and getting further men up the pitch. And it was just exhilarating stuff to watch. I mean, you score two goals like that straight after halftime in the first five minutes, it's going to kill your opponent. And that's exactly what it did to Ukraine. And it really just allowed Southgate at that point, and I think everyone to breathe, enjoy the second half. And as well, I think that it allowed him eventually, Southgate, I think after the fourth goal went in, when Henderson came on for Declan Rice to rest the likes of Rice and, and Phillips who were on yellow cards, bring the likes of Bellingham, Rashford, Trippier on and just uh, Cavett-Lewin too and just give them a run out too. So it allowed him to rotate the squad. It, it was the perfect night. And, you know, I think that overall, you, you can look at several players on the pitch that I just think were really good. And it was nice to see Jordan Henderson who started off this, you know, this competition slow. I, I think there was some doubt at the start of the tournament. Could he have any major impact due to not playing any Premier League football for months? And he looked a little bit off the pace. I think it was against Czech Republic when he came on at half time. Um, but tonight, of course, getting that goal. And, and I think he looked pretty decent too. So it's just giving Southgate all of these options going into uh, Wednesday's massive semi final against Denmark. And I think that Southgate, once again, deserves so much credit. He's created a team an England team that actually looks like a team that actually looks like one that's played with each other before and actually understands each other's role you know from the start of this tournament I've said that and I think it was a uh, something that wasn't really appreciated when we kicked off against Croatia and of course had a disappointing draw against Scotland an underwhelming you know sort of I think you know one nil against Czech Republic but as the tournament's gone on I think people were now starting to realize all of that infrastructure and work on defensive uh, shape and solidity and sort of balance within the team has really served us well now because you're seeing Seeing now those more expressive elements to our game, the talent in our attacking third really comes to the fore a lot more. It's going to be a completely different ball game on, on Wednesday against Denmark. Denmark have been incredible this tournament and they offer a lot more threats than I think Ukraine will. And they're a much more balanced side. Um, from a Chelsea bias perspective, um, I think now we are guaranteed at least one Chelsea player will win uh, at Euro 2020. So, you know, of course, uh, Aspilicueta for Spain, Jorginho and Emerson for Italy, uh, Reese James. James Mason, Mount and Ben Chilwell for England and of course Andreas Christensen for Denmark but in the case of England I'm just I'm so excited now and I just hope they can go that extra step this time and get to the final um, to face one of Italy or Spain um, I think there is a slight concern is a little bit logical with everything that's gone on with Denmark that the football gods are kind of with them and there is a, a wonderful story developing there um, I think it will be a much tighter game but that's where I think you can see Southgate thrive you know dealing with what's going to be thrown at him. I think the experience of Croatia um, in 2018, I think serves us well in terms of him being able to, to 
understand that situation, it going wrong, and hopefully can rectify it this time if England gets into a similar situation, maybe 1-0 up. We saw how they've defended Leeds so far and, and the ability to change things off the bench. I think there are so many players flowing with confidence right now. That group is together, the nation's together. I think we're so excited to see what could happen in the, in the semi-final. And if we can get to the final, then who knows, this could be an absolutely incredible, incredible summer for England. That is my review, review my rational perspective. Um, in terms of man in a match, I think that it, it's a tough one in terms of, because I think there were several good performers who probably went under the radar. I thought Mason Mount had a really good game. But I think Harry Kane, just getting our world-class player, our world-class frontman scoring now, I think is big. I think it really is. I think Luke Shaw too absolutely deserves credit for setting up two of the goals. So I wouldn't be too stunned if someone gave it to Luke Shaw because his creativity sealed the game for England tonight um, but I think those are me my top players too and, and I think that I'd be intrigued to see how much Sancho plays but you remember the likes of Saka who I think was injured tonight Jack Grealish Phil Foden you know players that can come back into this team and, and have an impact on Wednesday so thank you guys for watching follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea is it coming home and I'll see you again